Who was the support system of the Prophet ﷺ? The Abu Sufyans and the Ikrama son of Abu Jahl and the Khalid ibn al-Walids radiallahu anhum. Don't get me wrong, they're very, very noble, prestigious people. But they were the more elites of society and they came to Islam later. Some elite, some of the more very, very high caliber people did come to Islam early on. Like Abu Bakr and Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhumah. But at the same time, who made up the core, the vast majority of the core? Bilal, Khabbab, Ammar, Ali, Khadija, Sumayya, Yasir, slaves and low people and poor people and women and children, they made up the core. Support system, strong. They might have looked like they were weak in society, they were not very influential, they weren't rich. But talk about who would you want on your side? You had rich, powerful, influential people like Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, leaders of their tribes, money like nobody's business, power and influence like nothing. But were they reliable, dependable people? No, not in the least bit. But look at Bilal and Khabbab, Ammar and Yasir and Sumayya. They might not have looked like a lot. Poor people, low people, women and children, slaves. They didn't seem like they were a lot. But talk about being there, being steadfast, dependable, reliable. They used to drag Bilal in the streets like an animal. Imagine doing that to a tire. Take a tire, tie it up to the back of your car and just drive. And see what happens to the tire. And then imagine that being done to a human being. Being tied to horses and just whip the horses, run, and being dragged through the streets. This 100 degree weather we have here, this doesn't even compare, it's like 120, 30, 40 degrees out there, where this was going on. But in 100 degree weather, take something tomorrow, like a piece of meat or something like that, and just throw it out there in the sun, like on concrete. Just throw it out there and see what happens to it. Imagine a human being being thrown on sand, a big rock being taken and put on his chest and being left in 140 degrees under the sun just being left out there. Imagine what that human being must have been going through. And then being so dependable and reliable that when he is finally told, this is tough, ain't it, buddy? The people that are torturing him say, hey, buddy, you having a good time? And when he screams and he yells out of pain and anguish and torture and torment, and they say, we'll let you go right now. We'll let you go right now. All you gotta do, say, no more Islam. No more Allah, no more Muhammad, no more Quran. Just that much. You do that, we'll let you go. And he responds by saying, Ahadun Ahad. Ahadun Ahad. Ahadun Ahad. One Allah, one Allah. One Allah, one Allah. You can't take this away from me. Imagine a woman being tortured for weeks and weeks and weeks. Then she's thrown down on the ground and a spear held on her body and said, leave it right now, otherwise this is it. And she looks up at the spear and looks up at the guy holding the spear and says, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abdu wa rasul. And she's killed on the spot and her husband and her son who are tied up watching this, look what we just did. Same thing's gonna happen to the both of you. Leave Islam now. And their response is, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasul. Imagine that level of iman. Dependability, reliability. Khabbab bin al Arat. Coals being lit on fire and then he's thrown down on the ground. His legs are grabbed and he's dragged on his back across these coals. Raked across coals. Burning hot red coals. Umar radiallahu anhu was never the subject of a lot of torture. But he says to get that iman, to get the feeling of what they went through in those early days. He would sit with people like Khabbab now and then regularly and he would listen to the stories. And he told him the story. He said, one time I was raked across crows. And Umar radiallahu anhu said, what happened to your back? He says, let me show you. And he lifted his shirt and showed him his back and his back was just ravaged. It was scarred completely. It was hideous. And Umar radiallahu anhu says, I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. That's what they went through. And at the end of all of it, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. So Allah says, "Man huwa sharrun makanan wa adha'afu jundan." You people want to talk nonsense? Keep talking your nonsense. Keep doing what you're doing. This is Allah just giving you a little bit of an extension. And don't worry, very soon we're about to find out 
who really is going to be in the worst position and who had the weak support system. It was you guys. You're not only going to end up in a horrible place, but the people that you depended on, the people for whose sake you did these things, the idols for whose sake you were willing to make all these transgressions against Allah, we'll see how they sell you out. But the people who sacrifice for the sake of Allah and His Rasul Wasallam, Allah will take care of these people. Muhammad Rasulullah Wasallam will be there for his people. He said on the day of judgment, look for me at three places. I'll be there to take care of you. Place number one, where the deeds are being scaled and weighed. You need your good deed scale to just get a little bit heavier. Don't worry, I'll be there to look out for you. I'll help you out. You were there for me. You chose me over all the other nonsense that was around you in this dunya. I'll be there for you. Look for me when you need to cross the bridge of Sirat. I'll be there for you to guide your way. In the hadith beautifully mentions, Rasulullah will be there motivating and encouraging the believers. Go, go, go. Follow the nur, follow the nur. Go, go. Imagine Rasulullah cheering you on and motivating you. Come on, you can do this. You're good people. You'll be able to make your way through this. Finally, I will be at the fountain of al kawthar after you've dealt with all of the difficulties and all the journey of the Day of Judgment, I'll be there standing at the Fountain of Kothar that when you start to feel thirsty, I'll be there to serve you sweet, unbelievable, eternally quenching water of Jannah, and I will serve it to you in a cup with my own hands. Imagine Rasulullah ﷺ standing there filling up cups and giving you cups of water. Here you go, here's a drink of water. Hey, you too, come on, come get a drink of water. Imagine the love that he has for these people. That's the support system I want to have.